I'm gonna try to redo this. I was tripping all over the place. I feel like a little of a dumbass. I can't feel my face right now. Everything. Mm. One more scorpion. I just ate scorpion. Hey guys, welcome back. As you can see, I am no longer in Thailand and I'm somewhere very cold right now. I am currently in Beijing, China. So I wasn't quite sure exactly where I wanted to go next and I decided on China. I'll be here for the next five weeks. Then I'll go on to Hong Kong and Taiwan and I'm excited to show you guys as much of China as I can because I'm gonna be here for quite a while and it should be a really fun experience. So. Let's head to Happy Dragon Courtyard Hostel. Happy Dragon Courtyard Hostel is in a great location in Beijing. The closest station is called Dongxi Station. It's in a really great location. I was really happy with where I was staying. It cost me 169 RNB a night or yuan. That comes out to roughly $25, $26. Not the cheapest place in Beijing, but considering that you are in a major city and the location, it definitely makes up for it. You're given free slippers, a free towel. There are curtains along the beds for privacy. There's also lockers where you can put your things in. A lock is not included, so if you're gonna stay here or a place like it, you need to bring your own lock. I just finished having breakfast out here in the cold. I'm crazy, right? But it's such a beautiful day today that I just, I had to come out here and just relax. So today I'm gonna start by going out and exploring part of Beijing. And for the next couple of days, seeing as much as I can here and sharing as much as I can with you guys. So you guys ready? Let's go check out Beijing. I've made it to Tiananmen Square, which is a main place here in Beijing. There he is, guys. There is Mao. Mao is a old, deceased leader of China, a very old, long leader of China. See his big old mural right up there in the front of Forbidden City. Oh my gosh, I'm like dodging all these, all these selfies and photographs. As touristy as it is, it's like one of those places that you should still try to go to and then get away from the touristy spots. Something really cool I just discovered, guys. If you don't know, WeChat is everything in China. Just like Kakao is South Korea's messaging app and line, it's a lot of Southeast Asia and the, the US. WeChat is everything. So see all these people over here, and then over here, what they're doing is they can go ahead and pay for their tickets using the app. They scan it with the barcodes over here, then it's all paid electronically before, you have, before they even enter the Forbidden City. What a really cool and convenient way to do it. This is one tip, if you come here and you have your SIM card already, and you have WeChat, then go ahead and just pay it through WeChat. It's so much easier, so much faster too. I'm gonna try to redo this because the last time I was tripping all over the place. So what I just walked through is called the Gate to the Supreme Harmony. It was built during the Ming Dynasty in 1420. You can see it right behind me there. And we're now in this ginormous courtyard here, super beautiful, surrounded by different temples and different monuments throughout the square. One thing that I remember about the Forbidden City that I really liked is that they have like these big cement slabs right over here that have um, dragons carved into the cement. And I remember how much I liked that and how beautiful it is and how it just kind of goes straight up into the gate and into the temple. Really beautiful to see. And you'll see them throughout the Forbidden City. This is the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Really beautiful, really some beautiful structures and sculptures inside. This is what I just fought through to get that footage to show you guys. Look at all these people. This is a place that people from all over China come to see. You can just see tons of Chinese everywhere and foreigners like me too. Pretty. 
an experience too. So way, way, way at the top over there. That is eventually where I'm gonna end up today to get a beautiful view of the entire Forbidden City. Well, there it is, guys. There is a bird's eye view of the Forbidden City and the rest of the city of Beijing. Up here is called, I believe it's the Wanchun Pavilion up here. It's really pretty. It gives you kind of a 360 of Beijing and the Forbidden City as well. I'm hungry after fighting my way through all of those halls and climbing all these stairs. It's food time, guys. For a little snack, guys, I got dumplings, and the dumplings have mushroom and pork inside. Should be pretty good. Mm. Look how cute this road is, guys. A lot of the roads here in Beijing look like this, where there's a lot of shops, a lot of old antique stuff a lot of street food that you can grab I'm just making my way to the Lama temple right now which is one of the best well-known Buddhist temples here in Beijing and everyone is so curious as to why I'm talking to a camera vlogging in China is already pretty interesting behind me guys you can see that this is where everyone goes to pray. So what everyone does is they go and they buy incense, then they will come over here to the center, light the incense on fire, and they will do several bows. Some of them some of them actually bow to each corner of the temple. I'm not sure what the significance of that is. Really interesting to see. They'll bow several times, put the incense out, and then they will walk into the main hall of the temple. Because I really find in Buddhism really interesting and I want to see the inside of the temple, I'm gonna go ahead and buy some incense and make a little offering as well. So I just got some incense. One thing to know if you come here, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. They give these all out for free for everyone to make an offering over here. All right, so I made my offering and now I'm gonna go inside the temple. There used to be 500 monks that used to come here and now I believe it's about a couple of dozen, so not as many as before, but this used to be able to hold up to 500 monks in here. I feel like a little of a dumbass, so they were giving out the incense, right? And it's a box full of them, there's like 20, and I was like, why do I need 20? I like took out three and did it at the first, you know, temple, and then as I go through the temple here, it's like offering after offering and after offering, and then I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I'm supposed to do it at like every temple, which is what everyone else is doing, so. Um, yeah, I just did it at the entra entrance, which I think is fine, but now I have all these extra incense that I never ended up using. If you come to Beijing and you're into Buddhism, or even if you're not, come here. It's really beautiful and really interesting, and I can't feel my face right now. <laughs> it's that cold. <laughs> I just arrived at the Beijing rail station. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna be taking trains throughout all of China. I'm gonna take a total of six trains within five weeks. And I bought them all ahead of time online. So today I'm gonna to go ahead and pick up the tickets for all of my trains here at the train station, which will be interesting. I didn't get to do this in Russia. Russia, I did it in person. In Beijing, there are, I believe, like four main train stations. And it it doesn't matter which train station you're leaving from, you can pick up all of your tickets from any train station. They may charge you about five yuan or five RNB to pick them all up at once, but it's totally worth it. My train is gonna leave from Beijing West Railway Station to Xi'an, but today I'm picking it up from the main Beijing Rail Station. I don't have to go all the way out there today to pick it up. This is the one closest to my hostel, which really helps out. I got my tickets, all six of my tickets. They didn't charge me anything to get the tickets all at once. Super easy, book online, print them out, go to the ticket office, pick them up, and you're good to go. Night has fallen here in Beijing, 
and I have arrived at Wang Fu Jing, which is a very famous shopping area and also a very famous food area as well. So I'm excited to check out some local cuisine and some maybe exotic snacks here. So I just got scorpions. Thought I was just gonna get one scorpion, but it's three scorpions. Ugh. Okay. Mm. Actually, that was pretty good. I've never eaten scorpion before. Two more scorpions. Mm. One more scorpion, guys. Mm. I just ate scorpion, three scorpions. <laughs> I still feel one of them in my throat. Really good though. I've never tried that before. I've tried beetles and I've tried different insects in Thailand, but never scorpions anywhere. It was good, it was good.